Our next couple of classes are going to be based on the localized electron model. The localized electron model explains bonding by having electron pairs shared between atoms. The localized electron model underpins Lewis structures, and the Lewis structures also lead us to our molecular shapes through VESPER. As a reminder, VESPER is the acronym for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. It's the model that lets us draw the shapes of various molecules. We know that the molecules have all sorts of fun shapes like trigonal pyramid and tetrahedral. We also know that we can figure out what the bond angles are within these molecules if we know their shape. There's a whole chart of all the various molecular shapes that you'll encounter, and I've included a couple of videos after this as a review of the Vesper shapes. But before we get into the Vesper, let's remember our Lewis structures. I'm going to practice drawing some Lewis structures by looking at various resonance structures, first of the carbonate ion, and then of carbon dioxide. So I'm going to do three Lewis structures for the carbonate ion, then three Lewis structures for carbon dioxide. Let's begin with the carbonate ion, CO3, 2 minus. Now when I draw Lewis structures, I want to focus on the valence electrons. I have four in carbon. I've got six in each of the oxygens, so that's 18. And then I've got two more from the negative two charge. So I have 24 valence electrons that I have to play with in carbonate. Carbon is going to be my central atom. The central atom is usually listed first, unless it's hydrogen. I make three bonds, so that's six electrons, so I have 18 electrons left. And I go around the outside. I can put six on this oxygen, six on this oxygen, six on this oxygen, and now I've used up all my electrons. But the octet rule is not satisfied. The oxygens are happy, but carbon is not. I can remove two electrons from an oxygen, make a double bond, and satisfy the octet rule. And because this is an ion, I put brackets around my Lewis structure and the charge on the outside. That's one Lewis structure. Now, I arbitrarily chose this oxygen on the right to make the double bond. I could have just as easily chosen the oxygen on the bottom or the oxygen to the left. In fact, all three Lewis structures are possible. This is what is meant when we say there are resonance structures. There are three possible resonance structures for the carbonate ion. And the bonds actually resonate or vibrate between these different positions. And this has been shown experimentally. As we said previously, the stronger the bond, the shorter the bond. So the carbon-oxygen double bond is shorter than the carbon-oxygen single bonds. If you were to measure the bond length in carbonate, you would expect one short bond and two long bonds. When they do, in fact, measure the bond length in carbonate, you see that all three bonds are the same. But the length is a little bit shorter than the single bonds and a little bit longer than the double bond. It's a mix between. And the reason is, is this double bond is not stationary. It's very rapidly rotating through those three positions. Let's go through the same process with carbon dioxide, CO2. I've got four electrons in the carbon, six valence electrons in each of the oxygen, so I have 16 electrons total. Carbon in the middle, oxygen, oxygen, bond, bond. So now I have 12 electrons left. I can put six on this oxygen, six on this oxygen, and now I've used all my valence electrons. But clearly the carbon's not stable. As we've seen before, you can take two electrons away from each of the oxygens and form two double bonds, and that is a Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. However, there's nothing really stopping me from taking two pairs of electrons from one oxygen and leaving the other oxygen alone. And then I can reverse that. I could do a single bond on this side and a triple bond on the other side. Like carbonate, I could draw three different Lewis structures. There are different resonance structures. However, in the carbonate example, all of those resonance structures were fundamentally the same. The double bond was just rotating, but there was no difference in stability between one and the other. In carbon dioxide, there's actually a big difference. When you look at these Lewis structures, the one with the double bonds is significantly more stable than the triple bond and the single bond. And the reason comes down to oxygen. Oxygen by itself has six valence electrons. So it has two bonding sites. Oxygen likes to make two bonds. Forcing oxygen to make a triple bond is not really stable. And then giving oxygen only one bond is also not particularly stable. So this model 
with the two double bonds is more stable than the model showing the triple bond. By seeing these resonance structures, I hope we can see that some of the resonance structures are equivalent, meaning that there is no difference in stability from one resonance structure to the other, where some resonance structures are not equivalent. A Lewis structure from one molecule can be more stable than another.